he was uh, cited by one of his referees as one of the brightest young stars of European science, and another one um, states him to be one of the top young investigators both in the United States and Europe. Congratulations on winning the, uh, the Amber Gold Medal this year. Thank you. As you know, you're in a line of uh, great winners that precede you. Yes. And uh, of course, your research was, was on track to do great things already. But how do you think the medal will affect your, your future career or your research going forward? Well, I suppose the, the immediate impact is the publicity for, for me and also my lab and the institute as well, which is important. Um, and you know that will that will be very useful for attracting new people to the lab. Um, uh, but of course, yeah, as you mentioned, the the previous winners of this award, uh, many have gone on to to run institutes and uh, make very important decisions in European science and beyond. And so, you know, this potentially opens doors for that kind of development for my career in theory. Mm -hmm. So throughout my career, uh, I've been very much interested in the mechanisms of, uh, of double-strand break repair, and I actually started working on non-homologous end joining in yeast. So to give you a very simplistic view of double-strand break repair, um, I've divided it into two, two, two parts. Uh, in, uh, if you get a, a double-strand break in the G1 phase of the cell cycle, uh, then this is predominantly repaired by non-homologous end joining. Basically what this is, is a gluing mechanism. It doesn't involve using sequence similarity. So once you've copied the DNA in S phase, you have an alternative possibility, and that is to use the intact cystochromatid uh, as a repair template, or in the case of meiosis, the intact homologue. When I started the, the work on DNA repair and genome stability, I felt there was a niche because very few people had, had tried to study genome stability in the worm. Um, and Fortunately for me, that's, that's actually worked out to be uh, very beneficial for us. Um, but of course, as I mentioned, uh, it, it has its limitations. It's, it's still very difficult to do uh, really detailed molecular analysis, which I'm very interested in. And so, um, so one area that we've moved into is biochemistry and also proteomics. Um, we've also moved into mouse models to try and extend some of the findings we've made in worms to a, a, a model that's more closely related to humans. Uh, and we work in cell culture as well. So it's fair to say you have a pipeline of, of organisms that you scale up to as things become more... Yeah, more interesting. To the human, yeah, more clinically absolutely. Available. That's great.